I was in like a 50 person orgy. So there were about 30 people in like a bunch of matches that had all been pushed together in the middle. There were, you know, probably another 20 people around the edge. And at the end of that kind of experience, you don't really know like who you've had sex with, what they look like, you don't know anyone's name. So the swinger lifestyle is basically having sex with someone who is not your primary partner. That can be with your partner, that can be away from your partner, it can be at parties, it can be at swaps. There's a whole range of stuff in the lifestyle. There are parties that are very cisgender and heteronormative. Uh, there are parties that are very kink heavy and there are queer parties as well. So if you walk into kind of one of the classic, famous, straight parties, you won't see a lot of kind of conventionally unattractive people. And what's quite sad is those people get kind of filtered out, generally. You'll see much older men bringing these incredibly attractive women who turn out to be escorts because they won't be let in if they turn up as a single man. A lot of the straight parties are very white, very thin, very young, um, and very blonde as well. I would say, generally, if you're black or Asian, it, you don't see as many people there. There's definitely fertilization, for sure. I've seen like these really stacked dudes with these Asian tiny girlfriends and they'll be on leads and like I witnessed two guys who look like that literally swapping leads with for the women. And I don't know whether those women were into that or not, but it felt quite weird. So in terms of joining an orgy, there's like various levels of etiquette. Um, I think what's most important is you make eye contact with someone in the orgy. They only wave you in. Solo ranking is a general no-go at any party. So, <laughs> solo ranking is someone who generally presents as male, and they're normally standing in a space, watching people wanking without their consent, and they're normally trying to make eye contact with you. And basically what they're doing is trying to participate in a scene that they weren't necessarily invited into. There are parties for specific kinks. There is a party which is a greedy girls and hot wives party, and it's a ratio of six men to one woman. There's um, female domination ones. In London, a lot of the parties have staff who will watch out for rule breaks, they'll monitor orgies, which I'm sure is not particularly a fun job, and any time they see behaviour that's not okay, they'll normally call someone out and probably ban them from ever coming to the club again. So the old, like, keys in a dish stuff definitely still happens. I think generally the more provincial the city, the kind of, sounds really bad, like the worst the selection criteria. So I've been to some really weird parties. Um, I think the worst one I ever went to was in Birmingham. I, yeah, had an itch and looked stuff up online and ended up going to this club, run by this couple who were lovely, very nice. And the club, I thought had hostesses, and actually what it was, was it was 20 men surrounding two paid hookers on like a massive ottoman and all this fucking hair. There is a whole space in Britain for old swingers. There's like cruises, there's whole resorts in, in Mexico. I think since being in the lifestyle, my sexual boundaries have shifted quite a lot. I have kind of ceased to be shocked by pretty much any sexual behavior. Like. I have friends who are into um, like this play. I have friends who, you know, are into like urethral sounding and medical stuff. Okay, so urethral sounding is um, taking a rod and inserting it inside the penis. And to me, that's pretty extreme, but like they're living their best life. I think it's really hard to balance like emotional and physical boundaries with um, the lifestyle. I think what can end up happening is you or the partner that you're with, if you're swinging together, can be, end up being so driven and obsessed by like new sex and, and new ways to have sex, new people to have sex with, that you like lose touch of the emotion that you two have together. I think the swinger lifestyle can be open to coercive and abusive relationships. I have been in one that was centered around swinging. In hindsight, the only reason that we were together was because I enabled that person access to the swinging lifestyle. And it was very demeaning and very difficult. Um, it evolved into an unwanted, like 24 seven dynamic of sex. It was way too much. And like, I wasn't allowed to play with anyone who wasn't someone that he found attractive and female. I think when you're very sexually open, you see it as, oh, my partner wants this, like that's chill, I'm chill with this. 
but in reality it's like a loss of control over time. I've definitely seen things that make me really uncomfortable at swing parties. Um, I was actually in an orgy pile um, a few years ago and there was a woman underneath me who I'd been playing with and we, we finished playing and her male partner was next to her playing with someone else and like I could tell that she was super uncomfortable, that she didn't want him to be playing with this other person, that she wanted to stop. There's also a lot of pressure to perform. So, you know, if you go to a party and it's a really exclusive one and the tickets were like £200 per person, for example, and you don't have sex with someone and your male partner's paid for the whole thing, you'll feel a certain type of way, you'll feel you know, like you let them down or whatever. So you end up in these situations where you're kind of having sex with people you don't necessarily want to have sex with people to like justify the ticket price. I think a lot of people are sexually open and they kind of want to believe that a lot of what's happened to them is consensual. And to be clear, a lot of it is. A lot of it is people having a great time expressing themselves. But if you want to go to the police about something, for example, I haven't really heard about anyone doing that because, you know, if you're in the lifestyle anyway, you don't want to shut the club down. And there are some clubs that ban people a lot and it's great. There are other clubs where I have emailed organizers and said this person was abusive to me and they're not a safe person and not even to ban them. I said, like, if they're coming to your next party that will take us for, let me know and I won't come. And they've said, oh, we don't get involved in domestics. I would say generally the kind of straighter clubs take it less seriously. And it's really sad and the kinkier and queerer clubs, and again, those people in the lifestyle who really care about consent, they will ban people quite quickly. There are definitely people who join the community for bad reasons, for sure. You know, I think if you are sexually sadistic, you get off specifically on humiliating women, or you specifically get off on hurting people in a way that they don't enjoy. It's a space where a lot of people can convince themselves they're okay with things that they're not.